jumped, they climbed, they showed off their skills on this incredible course. And when it was all said and done, Cat Trial 10 Tech Test inspired people to look at a pretty awesome career path. I'm Deanna, and I'm here today with the minds behind the latest Cat Trial. Archie, Cat's done a lot of trials recently. What was the inspiration and the idea behind building this obstacle course? We want to do Trial 10 to highlight a very special group of people. Some of the hardest working people Caterpillar has, and it's our service technicians. Um, it's a group that truly keeps our machines up and running and helps our customers get their jobs done. So we wanted to be able to show them that their importance, but then also test their skills and endurance in a different way to let people who are maybe looking for a career and looking for a new job to realize that this could be a great opportunity for them. And Don, I've heard that these technicians, there's a demand for those industry-wide, correct? That's true. Yeah, we selected this to be focused on dealer techs because we need such a high demand of technicians in the future. Um, in the cat dealer world, we're looking at 10,000 to keep up with the current business demand. Yeah, and that's really important because our customers need that good quality tech to be able to deliver the service to keep their machines up and running. That's really a critical part of having a qualified tech who has gone through the training to know, because as our machines are highly sophisticated technological marvels, they need to make sure they have the right training to do that, like Keldon has. Of course, and that's actually one of the biggest things that I love about Caterpillar is their investment into their technicians. And Keldon, you actually were going through this training not too long ago, correct? Of course. And uh, one, of the, one of the things that I noticed from a standpoint of previous training and independent schooling compared to Caterpillar is they would... Caterpillar focuses more on applied learning, so more hands-on, more in the, in the classroom and then going into the shop and uh, practicing that theory. And it stands apart from most traditional schools. Yeah, and that's one reason that this is important is to get the information out there to the um, perception of what technicians are um, and what it means to kids that like that hands-on training and don't want to do that four-year schooling and sit in a classroom. Those that like to put the hands on the products, that's what they get with this kind of training. So they spend some time at the school and they learn about it there and then they get to go to that dealership and they get to learn it and uh, do it day, to, day in and day out. And I would say that's also a critical part of why we designed Trial 10 the way we did. Um, there's a societal perception, as Dawn mentioned, about technicians. They're no longer the grease monkeys of years past. They're actually, like I talked about, sophisticated, trained people. We use computers all day long. I mean, it's not the grease monkey with your, or your dad out there, you know, listening to the engine going, no, number three is bad. We need to replace this. It's, you know, everything's computer controlled now. Exactly. Uh, the first thing technicians do when they get to machines now is they plug in a laptop and they see what's wrong. They, they actually go in with computers before they even touch wrenches. Yes. And that right there just speaks to the shift in technological innovation within Caterpillar that requires a new wave of technicians who are versed in that. Who, who are definitely versed or tech savvy. Exactly. And Larry, you work pretty closely with a, a lot of these students that are going through the program. And I think in the, the obstacle course, you had the opportunity to help mentor them. Can you talk a little bit about that? The mentorship was fun. Um, the only thing I wish I could have gone is through the course with them. You know, be right there with them and showing them more. But that's no different than what you do every day. No. I mean, well, the, the, the techs are not by themselves when they're out in a shop. No. They have another group of people and they have mentors and people they have, to help them. They have mentors, they have everybody who's there to help them. I mean, including their fellow techs. Um, you know, the first thing you do is when you come across a new machine is you scream out, hey, who's done one of these? Who's worked on this machine right here before? You know, because you've seen them in the shop, but you haven't touched it. And the guy comes over and says, oh, this. Be careful over here. You don't want to really screw up over here because that gets expensive. You know, and normally it doesn't break, but that's an expensive part. So you want to be extra careful around there. And that, that really speaks to the camaraderie as well within shops for the most part. You, you'll see um, more care and concern for your, your fellow technicians. You can call on them whenever you need to. You're not alone. And granted, we, the technicians who ran this course, they were running it by themselves. But in a shop scenario, they wouldn't be like solely facing the problems. If you have a question, if you have any kind of concern, and you, let's say you don't understand a procedure, you can reach out to somebody who's done it before, you can reach out to your supervisor, you can reach out to people around you, because there's that support network that's there. And that really is, that really shines in Caterpillar service shops, 
compared to other dealerships. Yeah, and I will say that was one thing I noticed off camera while we had texts from all across the United States. Unfortunately, because we're in a global pandemic, we couldn't bring them in globally, but the people who were here got to talk to each other. So you saw people from San Diego, people from Portland, all talking and kind of sharing notes and about what they do and, and how they work. It was fun to watch that kind of new fraternity grow. Oh, and, and the, it's really interesting too, because you get to see that within a matter of minutes, they meet out a common ground and they, they take off running its friends. Exactly. They're just right there, okay, we're, we're in this together and away they go. I was surprised that they couldn't talk to each other after one ran it just for the next one, you know? Just because that's what you want to do. You want to go out there, you want to go back to your friends, you want to tell them, hey, watch out for this portion. Or you guys, you better study up on the can test, the one that really got them all. As a mentor, you couldn't sit there and say, okay, here you go, this is what we want you to do. All you could do is, you know, give them basic instructions. Go from the bottom to the top, inside to outside. Yeah, and I'm sure, Kelvin, that had to be hard for you as a judge. <laughs> that you were like, oh, let me help you. The but number of times I wanted to say, it, it's backwards, it's upside down. Like, pay attention to the way the flange is or anything like that, I, I had to just mark it down. Like, okay, this is a contest, I gotta remind myself that. So what was it like being a judge and, and not being the person on the course, but really getting to, to look at what they were working through and how that process went? I would say it was both fulfilling and challenging in its own regard, M much because of what Archie was saying. You want to jump in, you want to help them, you want to steer them in the right direction, but at the same time, you need to basically remove yourself from the situation and just watch and observe, and that's all you have to do. For those who, who may not be completely familiar with what it is a dealer technician does, give us just a little bit of a preview about what a day in the life looks like for you. Uh, for myself personally, it's very much so what most dealerships and most technicians will experience. Um, you'll, be, you'll start work every day, but at the same time, you're not entirely certain, unless you have left a previous project the night prior, where you're gonna start. You don't know what's coming through the door next. It's really just whatever rolls through the door is what you're working on. So you have to, you have to be able to come in and be mentally flexible, you have to be able to be physically ready to face whatever you might have to challenge yourself with. And at the same time, you have to be able to keep all that under an umbrella safety mindset. So kind of like what they had to do on the course. Exactly. Yeah. So that's really, I mean, I look at what Josh had helped us build the course here. It's really his team helped us kind of put those mental challenges to test. Oh, yes. It was a little bit like assembling that, that can test because like we have all these different facets of the course and how do we all make it fit and not redo it, take it apart and do it again? Because as it all comes together, like these big engines, once they're set, they're set. So it's like a, as, a, as a mental process of what's step one through step 10 and how do we do it as a team? And we did it. We built this course in four days. Four days. I mean, that's the amazing part. Even the off-road course that your team designed and built in a day. Yeah, yeah, and we're, we're sitting in a building that's two acres indoors which is a controlled environment, which is great, but we've used every square foot in this building. Watching it, it was a four day ballet, truly. And most people wouldn't think ballet with heavy construction. And this isn't the first time a trial has been hosted in this facility. So uh, Josh or Archie, where does this rank on, on the scale of trials that are held at Edwards? I would say this is probably one of the, the top two uh, for, for different reasons. So our last trials was Pac-Man, it was outside, so we had Mother Nature to worry about. But the main focus for that was the Edwards team to do the dirt work. So that was 90% dirt work uh, to get exactly perfect. And when you, know, you look at this trials, uh, it's all about teams coming together to assemble all this and not walk on top of each other. It's all a process, just like the dealer techs went through. I was gonna say, that's what we face every day in the shops, you know. There's, you, if you were to take a 994 loader and just turn it over to one technician, it, no, regardless of how skilled they were, it would take them a long time to do a certified powertrain or even just like rebuild a final. However, now if you were to take that technician and give him a team, make him part of a team, that product support really is, that's where it shines. And that's where we come into the, the issue where we just, we need more technicians. The need for technicians is, is great and it's apparent. And, and we have a couple programs, Caterpillar has programs to assist any of those who may be interested. Think Big is one of them, but Dom, will you explain a little bit how these programs work? 
Yeah, and I was just going to say, um, Kellen, your point there, it's important for people to know that CAT does have programs like Think Big, yes. um, some dealer funded programs as well, that bring those uh, students in, they learn in the classroom for a little bit, um, and then they go to the dealer and they spend time in the dealer learning from people like Larry and Keldon. Um, but they also need to know these uh, people moving into these programs that it's not just the equipment anymore and we are in things like data centers. Yes. I mean, these kids that are on their phones all the day and all the time, our products are helping with that. So it's Spending time at the dealership and spending time in the school learning about the electricity, um, the technology that goes into it is very important and it's hands on. So that's what these kids really excel at and really like. I think that's super important and I think the technicians that participated in the, the trial had a, a lot of fun. Archie, ultimately, what do you want viewers to take away from the latest CAT trial? Two things. I would like um, people who are looking either for a career change or people right out of high school who look at this and say, wow, I never thought a service tech was a good career for me. This is actually a great career for me to have a house, raise a family on, and live a good life. But then also for our customers to realize having a good service tech come out and deliver that service the first time, the right time, is important to keep your job up and running. So it's one of those things where I think truly probably the unsung hero of our industry is the service tech. We don't think about them because they're, you know, you look at this course, they're kind of off in the shadows. Typically, it's our prime product that's in the light. It's our customers, it's the operators that we love to talk about. But the service tech, if they don't do it and do it right, we can't, we can't do the photo shoot on a new machine. We can't have a customer highlighted because without them, we can't do the rest of our job. Thank you, Archie. Thank you, all of you. Uh, thanks for joining us. And for more information, please visit cat.com slash trial 10.